Thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse, guys. We are going to be going over Bitcoin today, um, and only Bitcoin. And we're not going to be looking at any types of moving averages or anything like that. We're not going to be looking at monthly prices. All we're concerned about is the long-term market cycle, and I've talked about this in several videos. And today I'm going to show you guys exactly uh, what I mean. So with Bitcoin, you know, it started, you know, I think it was created in 2008. But we have prices that go back pretty far. Here I have them going back to sometime in 2010. And what I've done is I essentially use this uh, um, this toolkit that's kind of like machine learning toolkit and optimized uh, logarithmic regression to more or less encompass the entire price history here. And you can see that you know during um, you know bear markets where you know at the lower end of this logarithmic regression, and then when we're in a bull market, we you know we tend to to go up uh, much higher. Now, when I, when I talk about the market cycle, I mean, many of you guys know this, but just in case you don't, it's more or less around the halving. So every approximate four years, there's a halving in the Bitcoin rewards. And because of that, um, you know, the selling pressure ultimately decreases because, you know, the, the miners are only selling, they're only accumulating half as many tokens. And you can see so far after each halving, so we had this halving in 2012, and then immediately after it prices started soaring and then in 2016 we had another halving and then prices went parabolic there as well but there's a lot of interesting things to take from this graph and we're going to just you know we're going to jump right in and try to make sense of where bitcoin might be headed in the next few years um, and the way we're going to do that is just look at at some of the trends that have already popped up in, in this market. So the first thing I have here, the purple on the top is the, the peak price during that cycle. And you know some of you will note that you know Bitcoin got a bit higher than this and you're it's right. That's correct. But we're what I do is I just mainly look at you know the candles. I don't look at like wicks that go up uh, at all. But so you know if you just follow along in terms of you know these are the Bitcoin prices at the peak in the bull run and then these are the bottoms in the bear market. So as many of you guys know, Bitcoin bottomed, you know, at around 3100 or so, not 3225, but that was just a wick. It wasn't like, you know, the part of the candle. So let's look to see how these like what the trends are showing us. So back in 2011, the price peaked at $31.9. And then it then crashed down to 229. But during the next bull market, it went up 3,508 percent to 1151. Now this 3,508 is actually measured from peak to peak. So even if you bought at this peak and you sold at this peak, you were still up over 3,500 percent, which is incredible. Um, if you bought in the bear market at 229 and sold during this bear market, you were up 7,600 7, percent. You know, I mean, that's, it's amazing because, I mean, basically what that says is that, yeah, if you bought in the bear market here and sold in the bear market here, you would have actually done uh, a lot better than if you had bought in the peak here and sold at the next peak. Um, now, imagine if you had bought in the bear market here and then sold at the peak. That would have been um, truly incredible. But anyways, um, you can see that this is a 3,500% increase from peak to peak. And then from this point down here to this point, it's 7,600% increase. Now, you can also note that from here to here, we went from 1151 up to 19,499, which was a 1,594% increase um, from peak to peak, which is still incredible um, to think that you know, you're going up almost 1,600% even buying at the peak over here. Now you would have had to wait like four years um, to see that 1594% return, but still that's an incredible return. And if you bought in the bear market over here, you would have bought at 177 at the bottom, and then you could have sold up here for 3225 at the bottom, approximate, at a 2656% increase. Now, where does this leave us? So how can we use this to try to determine where we're going? So one of the things you can note is that these peaks on this logarithmic regression are, are getting lower on, basically, you know, each one is getting lower down on these, on these lines. So you can see this first one here goes all the way up to this top line. And then the, the next peak, it drops down about three. 
about three lines here, um, which is pretty significant, but it's still a, a huge increase. And then if you go from this peak to this peak, we're dropping down about two lines. Um, now, you can also measure, instead of just saying lines, because I mean, these lines are somewhat arbitrary, right? Because I just, I, you know, they're fit, um, they're optimized in the package that I was using. But um, the numerical value is, is, just, is just this. I mean, you can see that this was the percent increase from here to here, and then the percent increase from here to here was about half as much. So it wasn't nearly as, as high. So if we actually look at the, these ratios here, so the ratio between this and this is 0.454, so 1494 divided by 3508. If we continue that same ratio, so if we basically have again, in terms of the percent increase from peak to peak, then that means if you had bought here and you sell at the peak of the next bull cycle, and if we have a 724% increase, which would be continuing this trend, then that would put the next peak um, potentially at 141,173. Um, now, another thing that's interesting is that I, I've drawn it on the blue line mainly because I think there's a good chance that that's where we're headed. So, you know, this one dropped down three lines, um, this one dropped down two, and it's basically just a way for you to visualize, um, you know, these, these changes in the percentages. Um, and now if this one drops down one, so if it just drops down to this blue line, but we extend this blue line out to the halving, so we would expect to potentially go parabolic after the halving, but we'll be down here that we won't be up here, most likely. Um, and if we just, if we make it up to this line, let's say it's it's the same as the last um, the last two times so you know this one was the end of um, or around 2013 this one or sorry this peak was the end of 2013 this peak was the end of 2017 so if the next peak occurs at the end of 2021 and it lands on that blue line um, you know it'll be approximately um, 141,000 but this 141,000 is taken from just this ratio here. This take going up 724% from this uh, the peak of this bull run um, to potentially the peak of this next bull run. Um, so it's not entirely um, set in stone there, obviously. Um, if you just go to um, uh, the plot and look at the, the data at the very end of 2021, it, it I think it has the price at around 160,000 not 141,000. So my, you know, it, it could potentially be around, you know, 150,000 potentially, but I anticipate a lot of people are going to start taking profits if it gets into six figures. So if we hit 100,000, um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of profit taking at that, at that point. doesn't mean it can't go higher. Um, but this, if we continue the same trend, would put us at 141. Now, if we do manage to do this, if we do manage to go up, like, you know, over the course of the, the next couple of years, you know, we're not going to go up in a straight line. And in fact, if you go all the way back, we more or less are on the yellow line down here when the halving occurs. So when the halving occurred in 2012, you can see we were on the yellow line. In 2016, when the halving occurred, we were basically on the yellow line. In 2020, we're already on the yellow line now. So, I mean, we could just continue to ride up this yellow line, maybe get to around 12 or 13,000 by the halving, potentially, I don't, I don't know, I mean, plus or minus, you know, a few K, I imagine, but what's a few thousand among friends? Um, if, if we continue to ride this line up, we might still be on this yellow line, and then we might even drop down. Um, but ultimately, I think we will likely see some type of parabolic run-up, and if we do reach this 141,000 or thereabouts, um, you have to remember that it's not going to be sustained and that we will drop down. Um, and the way I've calculated this number is the same way I calculated this one. So it's just taking the difference between these ratios, which is 0.348 from here to here. So if we do another 0.348 from here to here, that puts us at 924% from the depths of this uh, bear market to potentially the depths of the next one. Um, and that would put us at around 30 grand. Um, which, you know, I think would be somewhat realistic because, I mean, you know, the peak over here was 1,151, uh, which was still um, lower than 
the, the bottom of two bear markets later. So not the first bear market, but the next bear market. So that means that this, um, if this is the bear, if this is the um, ultimate, you know, capitulation area, it would still be, you know, higher than the peak of the previous um, two bull runs before, basically. So 1949, 19, up to around 30 grand from, from here to here. So, um, I hope this sort of makes sense. This is kind of what I talk about. You know, I know not everyone has this experience with looking at Bitcoin and the halvings and, and all that sort of stuff, but there is some, um, uh, I, I would say there is some methods of madness here. It's not just we go up and we go down. I think it's somewhat built around these halvings. I mean, I, I think it's definitely built around the halvings. I think it's an incredible thing that was uh, thought of um, to have the rewards. And then you can see that after, after each time the rewards are halved, that's when um, uh, the price really starts to pick up. And, and that's why I always say, you know, during this time frame, so like after the capitulation and then during this accumulation phase, and then during this accumulation phase, and then now during this accumulation phase, you know, it doesn't matter what, you know, I mean, it might go up, it might go down, who cares if it goes if it goes down to five thousand? If it goes up to thirteen, fourteen thousand, it's it's not really that. Um, uh, for for the people who are holding long term, it shouldn't it shouldn't really stress you out. Now, if you're day trading or sorry, swing trading, I can imagine it might be more you know problematic to figure out figure those things out. But if you're just looking at at these longer term moves, you know investing. Um, and this is not financial advice, but, you know, potentially investing when it hits this orange line down here, would it be a great time? And, and this roughly corresponds to the 200 week moving average, because in this bear market and this bear market, the bottom was the 200 week moving average. So, you know, you can, you can look at these logarithmic regression chart, um, these, these types of charts and, and try to get an idea of where, where to get in. I mean, even, even at the current prices, you know, in, for, for, for for the most history of Bitcoin, you know, we've spent a lot of time above the yellow line. Um, I mean, just look at the entirety of this bull run right here. And even during the bear market, we were above that yellow line for a lot of the bear market. Right now we're on the yellow line. Is it possible we go down? It is, it is also possible we go up. Um, but ultimately, I don't really think that we're gonna see this, you know, true parabolic run up to potentially six figures until we get past next summer and i don't i'm not saying that's going it, that it's going to happen right after the halving because if you look previously when the halving occurred we actually saw a dip in the price and then it found support on this orange bottom line here which is then what ultimately led to it um continuing to go up parabolically so it's possible that we ride the yellow line to the halving um and then we, you know we might drop down to the orange line which by then would be around ten thousand dollars, so it would still, you know, be around what we currently are, um, and then, um, well, it, it would be less than ten thousand actually. So, if, well, if we were to drop like, you know, right after the halving, it might be eight or nine thousand, which is what we're currently at, um, and then if we if we hold that line uh, for maybe several months, um, and then we might see something like what we've seen before. Um, now, clearly, you know, the peak here, you know, it could come earlier um, if, I mean, this is assuming it comes, right? But if it, it could come earlier, it could come later. Um, and, you know, I think maybe the later it comes could also be good, too, because I, I just feel like it's it's really on these longer term momentum shifts. You know, if we have longer to really build here, um, then and we can still assuming we can still reach this blue line um, in the middle of here. Um, that it would be higher up this curve, um, depending on how far out we go. Um, but I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys like it. Um, please subscribe if you like this content, um, and I will see you next time.